Peace FM, 94.5 FM in Chetwin, 104.1 FM in Dawson Creek, and online all over the world at peacefm.ca. I have in the studio with me Leo Sabalski, uh, General Manager of Peace FM, and Clay Basandowski, Counselor of the District of Chetwin. How are you, Clay? Good. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, we know that you just got back from Victoria talking to the NDP Legislative Assembly. And I just wanted to know, when you brought up the caribou recovery uh, problem, what was the reaction to it? Um, well, just uh, we, we didn't speak at all in the Legislative Assembly. We were in the, in the gallery watching. Uh, Mike Bernier uh, spoke to it. Uh, a couple of other uh, MLAs from the, the Kootenays and, and one from Nechaco Lakes, uh, John Rustad. Uh, they all spoke during question period to the NDP, and this kind of takes us back, you know, uh, a lot of years. This has been an issue for, you know, 2003, I think, is when it first started to be an issue. And so it, it's something that the NDP government has inherited, uh, and, and their reaction is is that the, the previous Liberal government has not been, had, didn't do enough, and, and they've had to take these steps. Um, you know that that's their reaction uh it's not my opinion um so th that that was basically their answer to, to every question that was asked um the reaction back from the liberals is that in the management steps that they had taken the herds have actually increased in recent years and and that's just where it's troubling that the ndp figures that they have to take these drastic steps when the herds are actually increasing in numbers today and the biggest uh, problem that seems to be with this caribou recovery is that Public consultation seems to be at a minimum. There has been some right steps in the direction recently, but I was just wondering if, uh, since you were there, did they mention anything more about more consultations in the future? Well, no, and that's the troubling thing, too, because, like, uh, and, and again, even even if the NDP was right and, and they had to take drastic steps, I, I have to believe that there would have been better options than shutting the people out that have the most to lose um, through this, uh, the citizens, average people that just get up and go to work every day, um, industry that have invested millions of dollars into our community. Uh, I have to believe that there would have been a better plan than to close all the doors and just shut all these people out of the, out of the discussions. Something that's really interesting is that um, we've had cancellation of meetings and now they're doing a province-wide approach and they're asking for opinions. Now, is there going to be a, a period of time where they gather all their opinions and then come up with uh, a decision? It was like when listening to all the approaches yesterday and the day before, do we have a date when a decision of closures are? Because right now there's a lot of uh, topics out there, but there's no no solid foundation. Am I correct? I, I would say that you're correct, and uh, that was uh, one of the point of contentions with MLA Bernier yesterday that he had brought up in his his press conference. That it didn't seem like they were taking the concerns. Uh, the the panel so far appears to have been a fairly argumentative, and in any concerns, most people were told that they misunderstood or referred to this section. Um, you know, it. I, I think probably would have taken the concerns a little bit better if they say, okay, we, we've got your concern, we've written it down, we'll take it into consideration. But most times we were kind of just meant to, made to believe that we were wrong. Yeah, one, one of the things that really surprises me is we are hearing from Ministry of Forest and Ministry of Environment people. So these are bureaucrats, so we're expressing our, our concerns to them. And um, People's fears are really high right now. Like I was uh, meeting with a person today who said, um, you know, I can't sleep anymore because I'm afraid the sawmill is going to shut down our investment in our home. Uh, my husband's going to lose his job. Now, there's been no conciliatory effort to, to calm the fears. Like right now, we don't really know what's going to happen, do we? No, we don't. Um, you know, like, I, I don't think that there's going to be anything immediate. Like, if, if I were to, to venture a guess, and like I say, I don't know much more than anybody else yeah. uh, knows. Um, but the one thing that I do know for sure is that we have two of the best forestry companies in the world in Chetwin. We're very fortunate to have two companies like Canfor and West Fraser that are operating in, in um, this town. And I believe that they're two of the companies that hold... Um, you know, their employees' interests 
to heart, and I believe that they're environmentally sound too. And um, so, I I know that there's not a lot of um, positives going on right now, but we absolutely have that going for us. Excellent. Now, when uh, the discussion was going on, um, there wasn't a lot of response from the government side, correct? Like I listened, and they're basically saying, "Wait and see." Am I? I, I, I see that, and it's kind of ridiculous in a way. I wish there would be some type of communication now. It seems to be all one way. Yeah, and there's definitely a, a very short timeline on when the socioeconomic impact study is, is done. And, um, and uh, I think that industry is working hard to clarify the estimates um, that the governments are using just to, to make sure that they're in check, which, which um, I'm getting the impression that they seem to be a little bit low, but... Um, and do you really think there are environmental non-government groups involved? Uh, yeah, I just uh, just read on the media there that um, the Y2Y initiative has been telling people how to answer these surveys. They have a link to the survey and telling them the answers to put in. You could just basically cut and paste to 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 fit their agenda. So who knows? Mm. I mean, they they got a lot of followers, and there could be people in Argentina filling these things out and deciding our fate and. Mm-hmm. That's troublesome. And uh, before we go, I just want to ask, uh, before we actually went on here, um, you mentioned something, a uh, partnership agreement versus the draft agreement. Can you explain what that is just so we have more information? Yeah, the Section 11 agreement is, um, no, I'm not an expert on them either, but the Section 11 agreement is, is an agreement between British Columbia and Canada to, to, um, to fix this problem. Uh, come up with a plan to fix this problem. The partnership is something that is um, exclusive to this area, and it's an agreement between Canada, British Columbia, West Moberly, and Soto um, that isn't... I I don't know why they're paired together, to to be honest. Um, But uh, that is something that's exclusive to this area, and it's a separate agreement um, to to the peace country. the Section 11 boundaries encompass much of BC, actually, and all all the way down to the U.S. border. Um, but this is the only area right now that that has an additional partnership agreement attached to it. If you were going to address uh, both the chiefs of Westmo and Soto, what would you ask them? Like a question. Oh, I I wouldn't. We're we're communicating at the Peace Region Regional District level, and I I wouldn't communicate on my own. Okay, it would be through the PRRD. Yeah, right? and I'm just one counselor of six. Mm. Yeah. Well, you've, you've shown a lot of interest, and in we thank you for going to Victoria, delivering that. And uh, you were with uh, Kathleen Connolly, executive director of the chamber. And uh, who else were you with? Let's uh, Tim Schran. He, mm-hmm. He's part owner of Corlean Sporting Goods. And, and uh, you know, they're watching out for the interests of, of everybody, including the hunters, mm-hmm. snowmobilers, quarters, and uh, everybody in the general, they've, they've sparked a lot of energy into this, yep. and, and we owe them a lot. And one other person that is getting nothing out of this but serving his community is Merlin Nichols is still fighting the mm-hmm. good fight for us. And, and also and Dan Rose, yeah. uh, Region E rep. Yeah, and, and you know, Dan and I, we, uh, we, we both pull a salary, and we're, we're just doing our jobs for, mm-hmm. for doing what we're doing right now. But, uh, again, Merlin has, has kept on with this. I see, I see that. I, I have three or four emails I have to go through. But you know what is really interesting is, is uh, put the community together, no matter what political interest. Like right now, um, Mr. Bernier is serving our community and listening, and I think that's really important. The writ hasn't been dropped or anything, and we have the Green Party, NDP, and, and the Liberals, and we're t- solidly together, wanting a solution to this very, very serious problem. Well, and and hopefully the NDPs too. Like I can't imagine yeah. that they want to put 500 people out of work. Like I I don't think that this mm-hmm. is a goal of theirs. Like I I have to assume that they're they're trying to do what they feel they have to do, and I'm not sure if they underestimated the consequences or just don't understand and there mm-hmm. every decision that you make there's always unintended consequences and just hopefully they see the um the un- i don't know i don't know hopefully they see yep. <laughs> that this probably isn't going to work out well i certainly hope that we've got british columbia's attention and even possibly the canadian attention mm-hmm. yesterday was the first day that global news covered the event mm-hmm. thank you very much thank you
Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, that was Leo and Clay Baskindowski for uh, District of Chetwin. And we are going to go right back into the music here on the Peace Region's Best Music Mix, Peace FM. <laughs> 